afternoon, everyone. Uh, first of all, thanks for uh, joining me this afternoon. I'm just conscious that I'm going to be in you this evening. And, and thanks to John, thanks to TechWorks for inviting me and Innovate UK today uh, to this fantastic venue and TechWorks AI launch. Well, we already heard from Indra and other guest speakers uh, about the importance of foundations, uh, skills, talent, and data, standards, and the collaboration uh, that we need to achieve even strongly in the UK. And I will cover, as John said, uh, some, some elements of how we can maybe build a better, more thriving uh, AI ecosystem <coughs> in the UK and drive technologies forward together. So, okay, let's see. So, before I get started, I'd like to tell you a little bit about me, just to get a bit of a, give you a bit of a feeling. Mm -hmm. So, I work in the city, and I usually walk by the house uh, where <coughs> I uh, lovely lived, and so it reminds me the grassroots uh, and of computing and how it all started in this country. Uh, and because of my job, I'm fully immersed into technology. Uh, and um, I really feel when I, I am one of those lucky ones, and, um, but maybe not that lucky. Depends on the day, depends on where, how you look at things, I suppose. I get really busy thinking about the future and where the world is going to be uh, when machines can think, uh, if they can ever think. Uh, and this is the same very question Alan Turing once asked. And as we are standing today at Bletchley, uh, he also reminds us that there is nothing that we cannot do unless, as long as we believe in people and put them into the center of everything. Like everyone else, uh, I like to go into the nature to clear my head and, to be honest, to stay away from all the technology and computers around me and surround you. I'm sure that you do something very similar. And I walk by three bridges along the Grand Union Canal. And it's fascinating to see that bridge. If you haven't seen it, I would encourage you to really go for a walk around the, along the Grand Canal Union, uh, Grand Canal, and see this magnificent intersection of railway, road, and canal crossing each other. It was built by Brunel, one of the most ingenious mechanical engineer and, and engineer, mechanical and uh, civil engineer of, this, uh, of the UK. The three bridges remind me every day when I go walk uh, around the heritage that it left to the next generations that follow Brunel and, and, the, and, the, and what we have is heritage of engineering intelligence in the, what we have here. In, in our grounds here. Uh, so, UK has very rich and long history in innovation, and it is the nation of creators. It has provided the world with great ideas, products, and genius solutions. And we are a nation of people in the UK here who change the world forever, thanks to those brilliant innovators, researchers, and scientists who actually paved the way to the new discoveries and inventions. So, Britain has been at the forefront of technological advancements for centuries and changed the world. And the first, in this very place, and sorry, I've just lost my thoughts about this. And so, we were at the forefront of the technology for centuries. And if we jog our memories, we will remind ourselves that British inventions and from steam engine to ATMs and to internet, they changed the world. And since the Victorian era, the Britain and British inventors solved big problems and made lives easier. All the problems were frustrations. So what we do, we are good at solving those problems and take away the frustrations from people. And thanks to the internet as well, another British invention, uh, our lives are much easier today. And when it comes to communicating with our families, friends, and people around the world, wherever they are, regardless how they connect, we are able to connect. That's the legacy that we are leaving to the world. 
So solving problems is in our DNA, and Colossus is a perfect example. And I think and one of the speakers also mentioned the Colossus computer before. Uh, as, and and literally, the world's first digital computer was born to solve a major problem for the nation. And although it wasn't made public up until decades, decades later, it was the machine used by a diverse, grand, talented group of people to break the coded messages of the World War II era in order to keep this nation safe. <coughs> So Colossus was the perfect product of intellect and brilliant engineering. And it was the result of a discovery process that involved considerable amount of trial and error process and considerable amount of trial and error of ciphering. Fast forward, today, tech descendants of Colossus computer are everywhere. Those smartphones are everywhere in our pockets. We, we cannot almost live without them. And from that era back from Colossus now to smartphones, we are in, a, in another era of engineering. Engineering AI microchips, engineering supercomputers. So what does it mean? It means human creativity and ingenuity continue to prevail. We are yet again in another era for fixing world's biggest problems and challenges. I don't know about you, but I feel like it's a, it feels like a full circle moment. So since Colossus in the last 80 years, we have come at so far, so far, but it didn't feel so far. It was gradual but fast, and we reached the era of digital revolution one that is promising to power the future of this nation. And the ongoing automation and the, in, in traditional manufacturing and engineering practices using modern smart technology, I think, is kind of blurring the boundaries between our physical, digital, and philosophical worlds. I suppose we can define the fourth industrial revolution as a collective force behind many products and services that are fast becoming indispensable to our lives. Think about the global positioning system. Think about voice activated virtual assistants, personalized TV recommendations, and the list goes on and on. The industrial revolution probably be described as the advances in digital technologies like artificial intelligence, the Internet of Things, genetic engineering, possibly it's the fusion of all. I think over the coming decades, we will see further acceleration of the technology. And as the technology advances, we will, as a nation, need to think about how we can adapt to technologies and adopt technologies better so that we can make the greatest progress. Equally, the future of the, those nations will rest on talented people, of researchers, engineers, and innovators, who will make, again, the new discoveries and inventions. So John mentioned, I work for Innovate UK, so we are here uh, as, a, as a, Innovate UK is a author, um, organization which is a public services organization in, and we, we support the government. So government priorities focuses what they what they their minds are on. It's very important for us. So we follow that very, very closely obviously. And I'll come to the end, come to the point where what we do as in our UK for the government strategies. So to prepare for the future that is shaped by the technology beyond our current imagination. The UK government outlined its priorities and focus, recognizing the nation's strengths and its ambitions in science and technology. So for the, for the UK to continue to be the driving force behind societal progress and thrive in a digital economy, we need to become better at understanding uh, emerging technologies and get better at molding and shaping them as we go along. 
So the, this slide is trying to show you the breadth and the depth of the strategies which have been published by the government over the couple of, in the past couple of years. So they are pathways to the future, so to speak, and give us a steer to how, why we should become <coughs> better at connecting ecosystems, how we can form them better, why we need to sh speed up harvesting the assets and the resources of the country better, and how we can leverage UK's leadership in multiple technologies more competently so that we can truly unlock the power of innovation for the whole country and the world. So, who is Innovate UK? What we do? As the UK's national innovation agency, Innovate UK delivers on UK government strategies. And we are a bunch of curious people, and I have my colleagues today in the auditorium as well. We passionately work across the government, industry, and academia to foster innovation. Our primary mission is to help businesses grow through the development and commercialization of new products, services, and new business models, supported by an innovative, agile, and flexible ecosystem. Well, Innovate UK also plays a central role in delivering government's vision for the UK to become a global innovation hub. We work to create sustainable, well-functioning innovation ecosystems, one that builds resilience and sustainable, resilient and sustainable technologies and enables repeatable outcomes. We are aware, though, it takes time and investment, it, and it will also in, require many decisions along the way and coordinated effort across the public sector and the private sector. So, what do we do, what do we focus on? Our focus stays on playing to the UK strengths and nurturing its technology and business communities. The aim is that everyone is engaged and empowered as much as they can be so that they can create the right conditions for themselves and for the others to flourish. So, what we are doing to create a thriving innovation ecosystem of the UK and position amongst the best locations globally to help start build those deep tech businesses in the UK. So, we provide grant funding and facilitate access to private sector investments. And uh, today you heard from a couple of uh, speakers and uh, the funds that they receive from Innovate UK. So it's uh, our testament to really help the small uh, enterprises and startup founders to get them off the ground. So we promote the transfer of knowledge from R&D for the use in markets and solutions to enhance business productivity and adoption. Through various mechanisms and regional engagements, we are supporting entrepreneurs, startups, and innovative companies. We are building knowledge and skills and developing talent with greater shared and individual creativity. With our expertise and strengths in foresighting, we are providing a lens into the futures, possible futures, and anticipate the best possible vision for tomorrow to support potential initiatives in this country, addressing some of our greatest challenges in society, such as environment, health, <coughs> agriculture, food, socioeconomics. So we are also nurturing local and regional uh, ecosystems to attract investment and talent and promote their global competitiveness. Through increasing collaboration across a wide diversity of participants, across local, regional, and international ecosystems we are delivering for the UK. So, how, um, how we are creating a thriving ecosystem in the UK? So, I'm very conscious that this slide is quite uh, wordy and very busy, but what I want to highlight is that we have a suite of products and mechanisms that we can offer to the businesses and help them really lift things off the ground, speed and scale and pace. And as part of UK research and innovation, Innovate UK operates in a vast 
ecosystem that has catapult networks, research councils, universities, national and international institutes, strategic and delivery partners, centers, and hubs. Collectively, we help businesses to access to new ideas, talent, funds, or resources through our engagements. I think earlier there was a conversation and a question about how the industry could get access to what we are doing in public sector. So you heard from other speakers as well. We are all here to help in order to help signpost better. So Innovate UK is there for the UK business and innovation. And if you are starting a new business or a business who wants to speed up your commercialization process, or you're a researcher or an academic who wishes to grow an idea into a business venture. We are, all, we are here to help you. Similarly, you could be an established organization wishing to solve one of your complex problems. Complex problems in your business process or a solution or a product or a service. Or you are thinking of changing your business model. And you are, want to get an access to the latest cutting edge R&D technique. Or you're an R&D or RTO organization who have keen interest in improving your bottom line through innovation and deliver results for the greater good. It really doesn't matter. And uh, it really doesn't matter what stage of business you're in, whether you are you, you are small organization or a big organization or the type of the organization you have. We can help you become a stronger contributor to the digital economy. So, what is, uh, we, we heard about AI today, the whole day, you know? So I would like to delve a little bit more into this and talk more specific about AI and its ecosystem in the UK. Fascinating thing about AI is that it's everywhere. <coughs> So this was, uh, when I was searching internet, I saw this as kind of picture and I said, this is exactly what I wanted to uh, talk about. Here you go. So a few years back, Feature of Privacy Forum published a landscape of AI to explain the wide ranging technologies uh, it covers and how broad the spectrum is and what it does from simple automation to complex independent decision making uh, process. Between the two ends uh, lies a range of AI deployments that use inputs of changing complexity, varying uh, input, generating outputs of equally varying uh, degrees of complexity and outputs and sophistication. Similarly, the AI landscape in the UK is very broad with varying degrees of AI deployments. AI is critical technology in the UK and attracts a lot of attention. We have a vibrant SME landscape, which has grown <coughs> in the last five years. And currently, however, the current AI technologies, the usage is still uneven across the sectors and within the sectors. So sectors like transport, for example, or construction are lagging behind sector leaders like finance. However, we are a world leader and leading player in AI technologies and have been ranked, the UK has been ranked as the fourth in the Global AI in Index. Although we made huge progress in the past recent years, the transformative potential of AI technologies <coughs> is far from being realized. So, Innovate UK and UK are research uh, councils. We are all working collectively and trying to provide targeted and very strategic funding to help sectors scale their activities for long-term competitive advantage in the UK and for globally, obviously. One of those targeted programs is Bridge AI. We heard uh, from uh, other speakers as well about Bridge AI earlier. It tries to provide our businesses and institutions and the resources, the tools needed to build a strong foundation in AI and helps them develop a blueprint for business expansion and growth. So let me dive a little bit more into AI and just to give a little bit more information and a recap from what we heard previously. So it is, 
the, the name Bridge AI, we want we wanted to bring AI and everyone in the ecosystem, from the developers to the users, come together so that we can develop the responsible AI technologies and deploy those trusted AI services and solutions and products. The program is building AI capabilities skills whilst developing ever more successful business communities to stimulate the adoption and diffusion of AI through a vibrant AI ecosystem across the whole economy, across the whole UK. Bridge AI UK is currently its UK's flagship program with about 100 million investment and being delivered in four target sectors that are important economically to the country and with our, with our strategic and delivery partners that you see on the bottom of the slide. So Bridge AI, the significance, the AI on its own is very significant. It's a catalyst. We cannot really <coughs> overstate its importance. From medical sciences to the creative industries, it has the potential supercharge every part of our economy and society and our lives. But to drive adoption, we'll need to put people first and adopt a new way of thinking about technology, business and execution underpinned by new business models and decision-making processes. We have skills competency framework within our scope, and it equips businesses and technical in, with commercial and technical skills, and strategically orients them towards sustainable growth. That's what's important to us. Skills and talent <coughs> are important. We need to build it, but we need to also need to have a roadmap to the future. Similarly, uh, you heard from Indro that we have already um, supported more than 2,000 uh, companies, engaged with them with their upskilling and reskilling uh, uh, programs. Similarly, we have multiple accelerator programs to support startups and scale ups through investment, mentoring, and training. We also developed our international programs uh, to offer startup founders and SMEs kind of the most powerful conditions to thrive and build meaningful companies that we will drive success together. Mm. So scale requires a major effort though and appropriate resource allocation because it is not something that we can fix overnight. So how could we help our businesses with tailored investment support, tailored funding, depending on where they are in their life cycle? So our investment program, Invested Partnerships, was designed to address capital requirements at a point where innovators require equity funding to develop their technology. As you can see, there is a comprehensive support offered through Bridge AI, and it's just the start. We need to build on it, and evolve it, and really help and reach out wider communities, ecosystems, and more SMEs and startups. And in and kind of inspire them in their innovation journey. So this slide is about uh, talking about a little bit more what we have done, what our stats are, how you can uh, really uh, go to our websites to reach um, to see more opportunities about Bridge AI, what it is open, what it is coming uh, down the line. And my team already put some example um, um, activities onto the slide. If you'd like to more, I think it will be circulated. So feel free to reach out to use the QR code to get to that in information. But in a, in a snapshot, we have more than 5,000 organizations funded about 57 million plus investment and another two and a half thousand organizations engage because what we are trying to address as part of Bridge AI is as well about how we can help them with their ethics, standards, skills and talent, how they can access to resources for advanced computing requirements that they have, etc. etc. It's it's a very fully fledged program. So 
we are part of UKRI and uh, UKRI and Innovate UK try to ensure that we are priming UK for the future and investing into building those AI advances and the ecosystem so that we can maintain UK's world leading position in this field. The AI investments therefore are more interlinked and you heard from other speakers as well about the fellowship programs, CDTs, they are all part of wider program of AI interventions and UK bridge AI is forming part of it. <coughs> Opportunity, how big it is, how big the AI opportunity in the UK. So AI is believed to create, believed, you know, depending on uh, which publication you look at it, it's, it's a wide ranging uh, numbers we see, but definitely the opportunity is very big in the mil billions pounds of economic value. And for the UK, it's <coughs> about 400 by 2030. And the value from automation alone is believed to be around 150 billion by 2035. So, so the transformative potential of AI is huge, massive, but still not realized fully. Driving impact at scale uh, from automation <coughs> to AI requires stronger orchestration uh, within and among ecosystems. And this is this is what we need to recognize. The opportunity is Big, but we need to lay the groundwork to reach to that opportunity and realize it. So what, what, how could we collectively achieve a better return on the investments and really drive the value from digital and digi data technologies in the UK? I think it has to be right collaborative environment and networks, then innovation will thrive the information will flow quickly and we will be much more joined up so that we will understand from each other what the, our common purposes are, whether we can create better collaborative ecosystems that can punch above their weight. So I think we are here at TechWorks AI launch event. So there is a huge business and technology committees behind all of the work that you are doing. And we are at Innovate UK, we are doing our own, delivering our own programs. So it could be fantastic to find out what opportunities out there for us to collaborate on for the benefits of the AI ecosystems and innovation. I think the questions, the queries you will have, the, the way you want to engage after this event would be very important and I would be happy for you to come and join me and join us, join our events in order to find out, find out more how we can collaborate better in the future. And for, for the SMEs that you have, for the startups you have, etc. So I would like to leave you with, the, with a, a few food for thought before I leave you today. Uh, and to recap, we are a nation of problem, problem solvers and innovators. With the substantial opportunity in AI, I think we have an opportunity to change the world again. I want to challenge you today to think and to become the greatest innovators of tomorrow and consider what our next big <coughs> innovation should be so that we can give a good legacy to the generations that will follow us. And thank you very much. Thank you very much for your attention.